Drew Brees is known as one of the greatest quarterbacks in NFL history, but it wasn't always that way. An undersized quarterback from Texas that looked into a college scholarship and endured one of the worst injuries a quarterback can have, and it almost ended his career. But all of a sudden, he joined the worst franchise in NFL history and won them a Super Bowl when they needed it most after Hurricane Katrina. But how good was Drew Brees actually? The Makings of a Legend Drew Brees was born in Austin, Texas in 1979. His parents, Eugene and Mina, were both successful lawyers who had athletic backgrounds, with his dad playing basketball at Texas A&M and mom being a tri-sport all-state athlete in high school. His first football experience was actually flag football when he played as a kid at school before progressing to tackle football for the first time in high school. He was a varsity letterman in baseball, basketball, and football for Westlake. He even considered playing baseball instead of pursuing a career on the football field due to adversity testing him early on when he tore his ACL his junior season. After the injury, his college recruitment quickly vanished, but when he returned to the field, young Drew was better than ever. That senior season, he had a high school completion percentage of 64%, throwing for 5,461 yards and 50 touchdowns. He led his high school football team to a 6-0 season in Texas 5A state championship. But college coaches stuck to their guns, stating that Breeze was too short and didn't have enough arm strength to be a Division I quarterback. He didn't meet the physical requirements for most of the elite schools in college football, Texas included. He had always dreamed of playing for the Longhorns since he was a child, so when they told him he wasn't good enough, he was crushed. He did, however, have two offers, one from Kentucky and the other was Purdue. The Boilermakers were looking to revolutionize college football by introducing the spread offense, and they saw something in Drew that other colleges overlooked. He chose to attend Purdue after being told that they were going to throw the ball over 50 times a game, and he was sold and was off to West Lafayette. The Train Conductor While Purdue was largely considered a basketball school, new head coach Joe Tiller was adamant about creating the basketball on grass offense. Running the spread allowed Breeze to play to his strengths and showcase his elite accuracy. In his first year as the starting quarterback for the Boilermakers, he threw for 3,983 yards with 39 total touchdowns and 17 interceptions, leading to him being named the 1998 Big Ten Offensive Player of the Year. The following season, Breeze improved so much that he finished fourth in Heisman Trophy voting in 1998 and could have potentially declared for the NFL draft but decided to return to Purdue for his senior year. During that season, he led the team to nail-biting wins over Ohio State and Michigan, sending the Boilermakers to their first Big Ten championship game since 1967. He was voted the Big Ten Offensive Player of the Year for a second straight season en route to the 2001 Rose Bowl, which was also the school's first appearance since 1967. He won the Maxwell Award and was again a Heisman candidate after leading the NCAA in total offensive yards, but finished third this time. He ended his career with the Boilermakers, totaling 11,792 yards, 95 touchdowns, and 41 interceptions over three years as the starter. He broke two NCAA records, including the most passing attempts in a single game, set at 83, and held over 30 Big Ten and Purdue records. He would later be inducted into the school's Intercollegiate Hall of Fame in 2009. It was named the Big Ten's best quarterback of the 90s. The Big Ten Quarterback of the Year Award is now called the Breeze Greasy Award, honoring Drew Brees and another fellow Boilermaker quarterback, Bob Greasy. Drew's collegiate resume was remarkable, but it wasn't enough to land him a spot in the first round of the NFL Draft. While he's predicted to be a mid to late first round selection, he dropped to the 32nd overall pick in round two and was drafted by the San Diego Chargers. In recent years, that would have been a first round pick, but the Houston Texans were yet to be established. Doubted and unproven again. When he landed in San Diego, he was the backup to Doug Flutie, seeing his only action in week eight when he filled in for Flutie, who had suffered a concussion. He finished with 221 passing yards in his first career passing touchdown, but those snaps would be the only time he made an appearance as a rookie. The following season, he won the starting job over Doug Flutie after a quarterback battle in training camp and went on to start all 16 games. The Chargers started the season well, holding a 6-1 record at midseason, but finished 2-7 and, and ended up 8-8. Eight eight. Breeze finished his first full year as the starter with 3,284 passing yards, 17 touchdowns, 
in 16 interceptions, a lackluster season that made the Chargers brass start to look for other options at the quarterback position. In 2003, he was benched after an ugly 1-7 start to the season, with Flutie taking over in Week 9. By Week 15, Breeze was back in, but his future was far from certain in San Diego, barely scraping 2,000 yards that year, and he ended the season with 15 interceptions and just 11 touchdowns. With the quarterback situation uncertain, the Chargers drafted Eli Manning, despite obvious claims that he didn't want to play for the San Diego Chargers. But he was traded after the draft in exchange for fellow rookie Phillip Rivers in what became one of the most bizarre draft night stories in the game's history. Rivers, who was a big rookie quarterback out of NC State, resembled what most teams wanted at the quarterback position at the time, but he held out over his contract and stayed away from practice and training camp. If Rivers hadn't held out, Breeze might have never gotten the chance to start for the Chargers again. Luckily for him, 2004 was the best season of his young career. He worked extremely hard in the offseason to refine his throwing mechanics and watch more film than you can ever imagine, and it seemed to have paid off, putting up 3,159 yards, 27 touchdowns, and only 7 interceptions. The Chargers won the AFC West for the first time in 10 years, and Drew was named the NFL Comeback Player of the Year. He was even selected to his first Pro Bowl that season. And while he was set to become a free agent, the Chargers elected to franchise tag him after committing to Phillip Rivers long term. So going into 2005, he would be playing his last games in San Diego. In his final season with the Chargers, he posted career-high passing yardage at 3,576 yards and added 24 touchdowns. Things were really looking great for Breeze, who was on the cusp of getting big money in free agency, but tragedy struck. In the final game of the season, he would tear the labrum and rotator cuff in his throwing shoulder while trying to collect his fumble against the Broncos. The worst possible thing for a quarterback, the injury was so bad that doctors say his shoulder was still connected to his body by a thread. After getting surgery to repair his shoulder, Dr. James Andrews told Breeze that he would never be able to throw a football again. Now a free agent, he was offered a five-year, $50 million deal to stay in San Diego, but most of the money was heavily incentive-based and the two sides tried to negotiate the contract. Ultimately, the Chargers refused to increase their offer and remove the incentives, so Breeze went searching for a new home on the open market. After weeks of talking to teams and rehabbing his shoulder, it all came down to the New Orleans Saints and the Miami Dolphins. The Dolphins were hesitant to sign Breeze, due to how severe his shoulder injury was, and they didn't know if it would heal properly. So that left the Saints as the only option who made a reasonable offer, including $10 million guaranteed in the first year. And that was all he needed to pack his bags and head to New Orleans. In total, it was a six-year, $60 million offer, and the Miami Dolphins' decision to pull out of the running for the former Purdue quarterback is why Nick Saban resigned from the Dolphins to head back to college football. Hurricane Drew. Prior to his arrival in New Orleans in 2006, the Saints had to deal with two disasters, one of which was Hurricane Katrina, the hurricane that ripped through New Orleans and forced the Saints to move out of their home, and the other was a heavy-hearted season as they struggled to a 3-13 finish. But with a new coach and quarterback tandem in town, the team was back in the Superdome and back rolling in 06. The new duo finished 10-6 and, and led the Saints to the NFC Championship game in their first season together and the team's first championship game in franchise history. In this game, their quarterback had a lousy night and the Saints fell to the Chicago Bears. Breeze proved all the doubters wrong this season though, showing that his arm was fully healthy again, throwing for 4,418 yards and 26 touchdowns. He led the league in passing yards for the first time in his career and was named a first team all pro. He barely missed out on the MVP award, finishing second to his old teammate and childhood friend, LaDainian Tomlinson. Heading into 2007, he was now among the elite quarterbacks in the league, and it was amazing to see, because the year prior, he didn't even know if he would be able to play again. The season went about the same for him, except he threw more interceptions, which led to the team finishing seven and nine and missing the playoffs. The following year, he cut down on the turnovers and elevated his play to new heights, as the offense was absolutely electric, but the Saints missed the playoffs again. This time, a lot of the blame had to be on the defense because he threw for 5,069 yards, becoming the second player in NFL history to throw for over 5,000, which led to him taking home the Offensive Player of the Year award. Now 30 years old and heading into his ninth season in the NFL, 
He was now in the prime of his career, and after two years of missing the playoffs, that all changed in 2009. Breeze set the tone for the season in the very first week. He threw a career-high six touchdown passes against the Detroit Lions and tied the record for the most passing touchdowns through two weeks with nine, which resulted in him being named the NFC Offensive Player of the Month for September. They went on to go 13-0 to start the season, losing their last three games with Breeze sitting out the regular season finale. The Saints had locked up the number one seed in the NFC and chose to rest Breeze to focus on the playoffs. He finished second in the MVP race again and was selected for the Pro Bowl while achieving a completion percentage of 70.6, which set a new NFL record. In the playoffs, the Saints quickly dispatched the Arizona Cardinals in the divisional round before overtaking the Minnesota Vikings in the NFC Championship. Breeze threw three touchdowns in both games and the Saints will face the Indianapolis Colts in the Super Bowl. It was Drew Brees against Peyton Manning, two of the best in the league. This marked the first Super Bowl between two quarterbacks who threw for over 4,000 yards in the regular season. The Saints went down early and trailed 10 to six in the first half. After the half, the Saints recovered a crazy onside kick attempt and Brees would later lead a fourth quarter drive with the game at 17 to 16, an ensuing two point conversion to give the Saints a seven point lead. And then, Tracy Porter stole the show with a pick six to seal the victory for the Saints. The Super Bowl MVP went to their quarterback, who threw for 288 yards and two touchdowns with no turnovers. He described the outcome as destiny while holding the Lombardi Trophy after the game. He believed he was meant to land in New Orleans with his family and do his part to support the city. One of the greatest of all time. Following the Super Bowl victory, the turnovers returned for Drew as he threw 22 interceptions that ultimately led to the demise of the Saints as they lost in the wildcard round to the Seattle Seahawks. But in 2011, he achieved the Triple Crown, a feat that requires a quarterback to lead the league in completion percentage, passing yards, and passing touchdowns. In doing so, he broke Dan Marino's 27-year-old record for the most passing yards thrown in a single season, the record he'd come so close to in 2008. Breeze set the bar to 5,476 yards. He threw 46 touchdowns, setting a new franchise record for passing touchdowns in a single season. The Saints will fall short with a loss to the 49ers in the divisional round of the playoffs, but Breeze was brilliant once again and finished second in the MVP race for the third time. However, he did take home the Offensive Player of the Year award as a consolation prize, the second of his career. That offseason, the Saints rewarded him with a five-year, $100 million contract extension, which included $60 million in guarantees, setting another NFL record. He was paid $40 million of the contract in the first year, and that season, he went on to break NFL legend Johnny Unitas' record for the most consecutive NFL games with a passing touchdown, with 54, a record that still stands to this day. Fast forward in a few years to 2015, when Breeze tied the NFL record for the most passing touchdowns thrown in a single game with seven in a 52-49 win over the New York Giants. He threw for 505 yards in that game, marking his second career game of over 500 passing yards. Over the years, he was consistently racking up 4,800 passing yards like it was nothing, which led to him surpassing 50,000 passing yards with the Saints, joining an elite club of players to achieve 50,000 passing yards with a single team. He was also the first player in NFL history to have over 100 games of 300 plus passing yards. At this point, racking up stats was starting to become what he was known for, as he was on his way to nearly breaking every passing record. In 2017, he broke his own completion percentage record, ending the year with 72%, before breaking it again in 2018 with 74%, but ended a 12-year streak of over 4,000 passing yards finishing the year just shy with 3,992, painfully close. This was also the season that Breeze would finally lead the Saints back to the NFC Championship game. They ultimately lost this game to the LA Rams. Still, Drew Breeze was recognized for another great season, finishing second in the MVP voting for the fourth time, this time to Patrick Mahomes of the Kansas City Chiefs. At this point, he truly deserved to be called an MVP. In the final two years of his career, Brees struggled with numerous injuries, including a damaging injury to his ribs and another to his throwing hand. His final game was quite poetic, with the Saints losing to Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in a divisional round of the playoffs. Now the record holder for the most passing yards, touchdowns, 
and completions, Brees took one last look at the field in the Superdome, his home stadium for all those years, and the fans knew it was time. And after the game, Brees stood on that field with Brady as old friends, talking football while Brady threw the ball with his children. This scene was a magnificent way to bring it all to a close and ended one of the greatest careers in all of sports. He endured the worst possible injury and almost lost his job to rookie Phillip Rivers before he went on to win it all and write his name into the record books.